Add on a short string, a ring, in front I'm of ready to go. Okay, just a minute here. And yeah. one is, sure. one is, not get out of the house. Okay, we are ready. Jesus. Okay. Good morning. Andrew Presbyterian Church, I'm very glad that you are here worshiping with us this morning. Um, I think it will be a lovely day. We have the joy of having our new members join us today, which we are very grateful for and excited about. Um, I want to extend a special word of welcome for those who are visiting with us. And if you have not given us your information, there is a friendship pad out in the courtyard, and we would love to have you sign in. Um, we also have an opportunity for you to sign up to be a greeter that is listed on the um, table outside with on a clipboard. So if you could take a Sunday and share being a greeter, that would be lovely. And then if you missed us last week, we started a new thing. So when we do prayers of the people, we are going to have a handheld mic passed around so that the people online can hear those prayer requests. So just so you know, that's coming when we get to that part. Um, and I, someone asked, well, Ann, you used to put your sermons out. So there are now a handful of copies of my sermon out on the table if that's something you want. So those are available again. I do hope that everybody will um, come to our new members party today that'll be at Janet's house at 4 p.m. this afternoon, and we're just a, a nice time of fellowship and to welcome our new members. So if you would like to come, please join us. It's a lovely opportunity on a beautiful day in, in this part of paradise that we get to call home. This week, we have an operations meeting at 11 a.m. in person. And then a deacon and session meeting joint potluck on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And then next week, uh, CASA stocking prep in Hubler Hall following worship. And then we have already ordered the Bible study, so that's going to start in the fall. So if you would like to be with us as we celebrate Sabbath, um, there's an opportunity for you to order your own books to do that. So let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. Children of God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. God invites all of us to be a part of the beloved community. God invites all of us to share in the good news. We are welcome just as we are. We are loved just as we are. In gratitude for all of us, let us worship God.
please be seated. We are going to um, start today in our prayer of confession with a time of silence so that we are all gathered and turning towards God in the same way. So as we offer God our confession, we will join in the beautiful work of reconciliation, which begins with our reconciling with God. Trusting in our partner in grace, let us make our own confession first in silent prayer. Pray with me. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts so that we are able to admit to you the fullness of our lives, that which is beautiful and good, and that which is hurtful and hateful. We confess that we do not follow Jesus in all that we do. We love with condition. We judge and condemn. We cast the first stone and keep the logs in our own eyes. We do not turn to you as the source of our healing. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive our sin and empower us to be imitators of Christ in love and service. Amen. Friends, sisters, brothers, hear the good news and see the grace of God. You are forgiven. You are free to go and live in the light of love. Amen. are here and um, so we have three of our five new members here present. Jane Parks McKay is also joining and rejoining. You might have remembered her back in our previous pastor's tenure and she's returning to our community. And then Allison Bridges who has the little one William who you've seen in the back. Um, her doctor specifically asked not to bring William to community events just yet because of COVID. So she is joining in absentia. So we are welcoming all five of them today, and I will start with Jean. We'll introduce them. On behalf of the session, I want to present to you Anne Christian, Michelle Pomroy, Mark Power, joining for the first time, and Allison Bridges in absentia, joining by letter of transfer and Jane Parks McKay in absentia, returning to membership. Thank you. You come to us as members of the one holy Catholic church into which you were baptized and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other's sisters and brothers in the family of God. We rejoice in the gifts that you bring to us. And as you join with us in the worship and service of this congregation, it is fitting that together we reaffirm the covenant into which you were baptized, claiming again the promises of God, which are ours in our baptism. Hear these words from scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one faith, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of us all who is above all and through all and in all. So to you, new members, who is your Lord and Savior? 
Do you trust him? Will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying Christ's word and showing Christ's love? Wonderful. Now I'm going to ask you all to stand because we are going to say our affirmation of faith together. And this is a responsive affirmation of faith, even though it is the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. To the new members, you have now publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Will you? Wonderful. Let us all pray. Eternal and loving God, we are so grateful for these new members that they have come to us to join into the family of faith here at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. Bless them with your courage, your insightfulness, your strength, and your love and compassion. And as we welcome them, may we be reminded of the true welcome that we each have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So Anne, Michelle, Mark, and Allison and Jane in absentia, by professing your faith, you are expressing your intention and continue the covenant God made with you in your baptism. We welcome each of you as you join with us in worship and the mission of this church. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you to share with us in the ministry of Christ here at St. Andrew Church. There we go. Well, so what do you do here? We're going to go like that. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Yay! And everybody is invited to Janet's house at 4 p.m. to celebrate this wondrous day. I just want to say that this next set of um, pieces that we're going to play is from Israel. Um, and the first, the first one we did for the intro is from Turkey. And the final one we're going to do is from Egypt. So I hope you enjoy that. Okay, I'm going to repeat what you just said. Okay. This one is from Israel. The first one was from Turkey. And the third one will be from Egypt? Yes. Okay, so just everybody heard where they're from. And they kind of have remained the same since Christ walked on our earth. So they're very special, special pieces. <laughs> Thank you. 
So as we get ready to share our joys and requests um, with each other, I just want to say thank you to Cody and Matt. Those have been two wonderful things, and I'm looking forward to the third one. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. Um, I, I think you might have noticed that uh, Jean is not Gwen. So if you noticed, you thought, huh, I thought Gwen was going to be the liturgist. Just, I don't know, maybe you noticed that. Um, Gwen is home taking care of Eileen. She had uh, knee surgery, and so she is able to be at Eileen's house because it's all one level. I mean, so she's at Gwen's house because that's all one level as she just does the rehab. So I just wanted to say thank you to Gwen and thank you for Jean to stepping in. So we want to keep Eileen and Gwen and Dick as they're all doing this all together in our prayers as they move forward. So that's the first one. Um, the second one that I do want to share is that this week, I, uh, Chloeanne called me Saturday morning to tell me that Bob Curtis had passed away on Friday night. I do believe it was um, a very... Uh, I think COVID shifted things for Bob. As you know, he's had Alzheimer's for a good long while, and this was just the turning point in that. And so I'm very grateful that he spent the last week in hospice. So um, we want to keep Chloanne in our prayers, um, and uh, Rose is on the table. Lori's going to take over there for them, and it is just a time for us to rally around the Curtis family. So just to let you all know that that is happening. The only other one that I have is that Sharon Willoughby continues going through her chemotherapy. So other prayers that people would like to lift. Edie. Hold on, Jean's coming. Jean's coming. That's quite all right. I guess I should have everybody raise their hand first so Jean has time, so. I'd like to... Uh, send a shout out to our custodian. Mm. Most of us don't even notice her because she's busy doing her job. I noticed her this morning because I was busy forgetting what time church started and I got here a half an hour early. <laughs> and she was very, very helpful. Very, very, I mean, very helpful yes. and very lovely. And I appreciate it. And her name is Laura or Lori, depending on who you talk to. Um, but she is delightful and very helpful. So other people? Oh, now, of course, you're over here. Yeah. If you have one, Gene, you can talk on your way. Well, let's have prayers of gratitude. Elizabeth, one of our own, started a new job this week as an investment bankers analyst. Ooh. Uh, so I would like continued prayers for the Mendonca family, uh, Talita, Alan, Isla, and uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, Thais. Uh, Talita is now undergoing radiation therapy to hopefully affect whatever is on her brainstem that they can't even do a biopsy of. And uh, they're hopeful that it's having a salutary effect. They're, they're guardedly hopeful. Meantime, um, Alan and Thais are just utterly exhausted taking care of Talita. They have to do everything. She can't move. She can't well, if you've ever had to take care of somebody with a stroke, you know what this is like. She's just basically paralyzed and uh, taking care of the baby without relief. So um, Alan's parents have shown up. And so that's somewhat of a change in energy, he says. Um, and uh, anyway, she's, she'll probably be coming home on the 9th of September after the radiation treatment is over with. But I'm not encouraging her to do that because I feel like she needs to stay with her family. But we'll anyway, see. continued prayers for Talita and Thais and Alan and baby Isla. Susan? Um, yes, that things will go well this afternoon. Um, there's, they're trying to set up um, a reconciliation in our family. And that some of the requests that I have made will be met. Okay. Family reconciliation for Susan. If you didn't hear that, it cut out. Uh, Lori? You are getting your work up. So um, continued prayers for our friend John uh, for his prostate cancer. His numbers have changed and they're trying a new chemo. So we pray that that works for him. We will keep John in our prayers. Anyone else? Oh, Michelle. Oh, Penny first. 
I would like to express my gratitude that my cancer is in still in remission. Oh, good. And, um, but I would like prayers and, and um, energy out for my uh, house to be sold so I can move on. <laughs> I, I need to downsize quite a bit and um, uh, my house has just become a huge burden and it's a beautiful house, but I need to let go of it and hopefully somebody will come along and appreciate it as much as I have. Thank you. Give it right to Michelle. There we go. Um, hi, I recently learned that a friend of many years is suffering from um, a tumor uh, between her C1 and C2, but it's not yet cancer, it, but, but they're watching it. But sadder yet is that her nephew and grandnephew, his son, are both in the throes of depression. So I ask for prayers of healing and for all three. Thank you. It's Cindy. What's the name of the person with the two? Cindy. Cindy. Okay. Her nephew, Michael, and oh, I think his son is Aaron, I think. But, okay. Uh, I've not met the grand nephew. Anyone else? Oh, Anne, over here. like to thank this church for being so helpful and good and caring and then God to remember. Um, I'm still looking for a place to live. It goes on and on. I almost hate to bring it up again, but, but um, I'm looking every single day on the internet and going places and nothing comes up. Anyway, um, Hopefully, one of these days I can say thank you, God. Thanks, Dan. She's looking for a place to live. Anyone online, Don? Ray and Carolyn Southard. Carolyn, you are up. Or maybe not. <laughs> Carolyn? Carolyn? Okay. Anybody else online? Uh, yes. Yeah, Go ahead, Al. Yeah. yeah, and uh, continued prayers for my daughter, Kathy. She says she continues her struggle and her trek through this uh, unfortunate situation. And also for my two friends here in, in uh, near Las Vegas, in Las Vegas, and, and my Marine friends, Mike and Bill, they continue to struggle with breathing. And uh, so one of them doesn't look like he's gonna come out of the hospital. So anyway, I, I asked the congregation's prayers for those three, my daughter and my two Marine friends. Thank you. Thanks, Al. I'm just gonna say, it's good to see you, Eileen. I can see you on the little Okay, let's look to God in prayer. God of reconciliation and of hope, we come to you this day with our hearts wide open, grateful for the ways that you hear our prayers and await our openness as we share them with you. We start this day thinking about where people dwell and the needs that people have to have a place to call home. 
We pray that Anne would find a place in this community that will work and serve her needs. And we pray too that Penny will be able to let go of her home and find a place in which she can find comfort that is a little smaller and more appropriate for this time in her life. We pray too for uh, Susan as they go through some family reconciliation efforts, that you would be in that time, truly blessing them and your spirit moving in all that is being asked and discussed. We pray for Talita and Thais as uh, Talita goes through radiation and the entire family that Carolyn is so intimately connected with that we hope that you will find a way forward both in their lives and in uh, the recovery that they are seeking. And then Lord, we gather with heavy hearts and also a relief that Bob is now with you in heaven. We are grateful for the ways that you, in your mercy and in your time, decide to bring people into your fold. Be with Cloanne and the family as they walk this path of letting go and making arrangements. And may they feel the love of both God and this community in their hearts in these days of sadness and longing. We pray for Al and his friends who are, were friends from when he was a Marine, both Mike and Bill, in their struggle to breathe, um, one that may remain in the hospital until the end. We pray also for her, his daughter, Kathy, who has had a pneumonia-like illness that she has struggled with for a long period of time. Bless her with your comfort and your strength, Lord. We pray for uh, Michelle's friend, Cindy, who has found uh, a tumor on her spine that her friend um, and their relatives, Michelle, or sorry, Michael and Aaron, who have gone into depression with all that is going on within the family. We do know, Lord, that one illness affects the next person in the family, and we ask your healing presence to be with those who are caretakers, those who are supporting others, those who have the long haul in this journey that we call walking life together. We are grateful that Penny's cancer remains in remission, and we ask your blessing to be upon John as he continues his prostate cancer treatments. We pray for Sharon Willoughby as she continues her chemotherapy, and we ask for um, Eileen's healing and strengthening as she recovers with Gwen and Dick after knee surgery. And Lord, there are so many things for which to be thankful. We are thankful for our custodian, Laura, and the ways that she takes care of this campus and has such a wonderful attitude. We pray for Elizabeth, that Jean's daughter has now found a job as an investment banker analyst. We give thanks for our new members, Allison, Jane, Michelle, Mark, and Anne, and for the party and celebration we will share later today at Janet's house. Lord, we join together knowing that we truly are knit together as a family of faith. And one of the ways that that um, knitting takes place is through our corporate prayer and sharing the joys and concerns that are on our hearts and lifting them to you. So now we join in the prayer that you taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
if you play with them, they need to square up on the matrix. Draws close on square. As the scriptures are read and the words proclaimed. Let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts. And let all other words slip away. May there be one voice we hear today, the voice of truth and faith. Amen. Our first lesson is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught. Abounding in thanksgiving. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our uh, second lesson comes to, well, first we're going to start with uh, how this sermon starts. And I, we're concluding our sermon series on discipleship. And I think it's kind of appropriate as we welcome three new disciples in here and five total into our midst that we are grateful that we are concluding this and we are welcoming Michelle, Mark, Anne, Allison, and Jane into the family of faith. So we truly hope that this will be a place of spiritual home and support within this community to all of you. Now, during our summer, summer sermon series from Luke's Gospel, we have looked at not following the crowd, addressing our excuses to following, welcoming ways to be empowered to follow Jesus. Then we asked, who is my neighbor with the story of the Good Samaritan? We looked at trusting God and felt how personal discipleship really is with the first person account from Martha. But right after this encounter with Martha and Mary, Jesus decides to pray. Now, Jesus prays an awful lot in Luke's gospel, more than in any of the other evangelists, demonstrating the importance of prayer in Jesus's life and ministry. So it makes sense that the disciples ask Jesus how to pray. But you will notice this, this is a little different than the prayer we just said, the one we know and love known as the Lord's Prayer. Here in Luke, it is a little more simplified version, which helps us to see the vital parts of what Jesus is conveying. Listen now for God's word to you as it comes to us from Luke chapter 11, starting with the first verse. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him in the middle of the night and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot give, get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is a friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? 
Or if the child asks for an egg, we'll give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of the Lord. Recently, Parker and I helped to celebrate my niece's graduation from college. She came home for a visit, prompting the party. And sitting outside, looking at the ocean at Bonnie Dune, we heard about her relocating to New York City, exploring Greenwich Village and her initial pursuits and getting a job. And then Parker gave an update on his moving out and working for AT&T, having not yet completed his education. I'm going to insert right here that Parker leaves tomorrow for two months in New Orleans working as an AT&T tech. So I might be a little off in the next two months as my little ones fly the coop. But back to the story. Several parents and a set of grandparents were all there. And you could sense the differing expectations and the ways of nurturing these two young 20-somethings. Should parental support mean everything is paid for? Or does it mean they find their own way in the world? Now, I will say I sat there proud of Parker and the fine young man he has become, engaging with all these adults and contributing to the conversation in meaningful ways. He was blooming right before my eyes, even though he did not follow the path that I had set out for him. I start here because Jesus starts his prayer and ends his prayer with calling God Father. Jesus is teaching us of the parental relationship we share with God. Jesus does not say, my Father, and other ancient texts do say, our Father, Yet Jesus is granting his familial relationship with God to us through prayer. One commentator writes, Jesus invites us to address the Holy One of Israel as pater, father. One addresses God that is akin to the way a child would ask a parent something of dear need and desire. Much like a child asks for bread and the friend asks another friend for bread in the middle of the night. These are basic needs we bring to our Lord, our Father, our Daddy. Prayer is to be relational and intimate, not formulaic and cold. Yet you might have noticed that this prayer is shorter and a simplified version of the one we know from Matthew's gospel and the Sermon on the Mount. But it says five clear things. Honor God and God's name. Invite God into your heart and into your community. Lean into God to give you all that you need, from simple bread to strength for the day. Forgive as we have been forgiven and trust God to help you with temptations. Now we know this all backwards and forwards and yet the simplicity is startling. Honor God, invite God in, ask God for what you need, forgive and trust God. Martin Luther once said, the fewer the words, the better the prayer. Isn't that reassuring? We can talk to God in everyday language just like we talk to a friend. We don't have to pray long. God delights in the simple words of praise, like, Lord, I love you. God answers the simplest requests, like, Lord, give me strength for today. Anne Lamott writes in Traveling Mercies that our two best prayers are help me, help me, help me, and thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Prayer is the foundation for discipleship. Yet we might feel like we don't know how to pray, or our prayer life could be better. First off, I want to say we all feel that way. But as a teacher friend reminded me, we get better at things with time on task. The more we pray, the better we get at it. And to address our hesitancy to pray, let's look at three areas. To pray confidently, to pray expectantly, and finally, prayer begins with God. I don't know about you, but when I don't feel like I'm good at something, I shy away from it. But how do we ever improve if we don't try? and practice. But then Anne and Barry Ulnoff, two Episcopal priests, did some research that affirmed their belief that infants are born praying. Love this image. Infants are so close to God that every sound they utter, from coos to gurgles and whimpers to screams, is prayer. No matter what, infant, what language the infants grow into, their original language is universal. And if we believe, believe that prayer is our natural, primal language, then we do not have to learn how to pray. Instead, we have to remember how to pray. For me, remembering is easier than learning something new. And I'm able to relax and affirm that in my deepest self, I already know how to pray. So the next time you want to pray, imagine yourself as an infant, fluent in God's language and confident in praying. And all you simply need to do is remember. We pray confidently because God has already given us the language of prayer. We are born with it. Second, pray expectantly. I have often struggled with the ask, seek, knock part of this text because I have prayed to God and my prayers did not get answered, or at least in the ways that I was looking for. A loved one died, a relationship ended. So this blanket affirmation that if I ask, it will be given to me is hard for me to hold on to, even though I desperately want to. Then I started thinking about it in a new way, and I heard this passage in a new light. The call and response of ask and it will be given, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open, is to help us with our approach to prayer as much as God's consistency in answering. So do you pray with an expectant heart, hoping, anticipating, waiting for God to move mountains? How much more exciting prayer becomes when we keep our eyes open to watch for God's answer? Sometimes I wonder how many answers we miss because we really don't expect God to respond. So I encourage you to pray expectantly. Finally, prayer begins with God. Jane Bernard writes, a student of mine shared with me he believed that all prayer begins with God. This was a totally new idea for me, and I had always held the belief that prayer was up to me. I had to initiate the communication. Considering that God was the initiator of the prayer, relationship turned everything upside down. God was already present. God was waiting for me to respond to God's invitation. All I had to do was say yes. End quote. Prayer begins with God and is in the love language we share with God, our Father. St. John Vianney wrote, prayer is the inner bath of love into which the soul plunges itself. 
I'm going to say that again. I love that image. Prayer is the inner bath of love into which the soul plunges itself. When I heard that plunging idea, it reminded me of the swimming I'm doing right now. I have been swimming to rehab my shoulder and my foot. And the most challenging part of my laps is when I do a length of backstroke, free, breathing freely, and then take one big gulp of air and swim freestyle the other direction without taking a breath. And it's a challenging way to get my cardio up and my lungs to function and all of those cool things. Now I'm closing with this story that speaks of the power of prayer in our lives as disciples of Christ. So one woman says, swimming is my deepest form of prayer. She is recovering from knee surgery. And she says, I imagine I am breathing in God's love and breathing out my worries. And then, because my injured body is so cumbersome on land, I am grateful for how the water holds me up and gives me rest, even as I swim. This reminds me how God's love does that for me every moment of every day. Amen. We are at the time in our worship when we give our thanks to our God for the prayers that we have and the gratitude that we share with our Lord. And as you know, we have a collection box out in the courtyard, and this is a time for us to celebrate all that God has given us.
join with me in prayer. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.